Okay, and welcome back to Fast Hit Performance then. My name is Tim Davies and I've just pulled over really by the side of the road. I'm on the way home and I was gonna go and go for a walk with you, but I thought it'd be better just to stay in the car and get this one out today because we're gonna talk about self-esteem and anxiety, especially in the workplace and in your career strand. And I'm no different to that, okay? I went through as a fight pilot in the Royal Air Force for 20 years, all right? And I had self-esteem issues to a certain extent. So I wanna talk about that a little bit. Uh, and also the fact I haven't done one of these for a few weeks, because I was on GB News recently and my voice, if you look back in the uh, the videos, my voice was husky as a tiger, okay, because I was getting over some illness and I never get ill. Since leaving the workplace, interestingly enough, leaving the conventional workplace, my rates of illness have dropped. I think I, I was ill for about four weeks uh, and before that I wasn't ill for maybe two years, maybe 18 months, two years. It is amazing how if you reduce the stress level in your everyday life, your body reacts to that in a, a very interesting way. It just doesn't seem to get ill. So much so, and I am diverging, and we're gonna get back onto the topic of self-esteem and anxiety, but so much so that I believe stress is probably one of the biggest, especially most biggest neglected factors, that along with sugar, um, especially when we're addressing our, not only mental, but our physical health. So we're talking about self-esteem, and in this video then, I'm only gonna go on for about eight minutes, probably max. I'm gonna talk about how anxiety affected me within my career not so much anxiety but um, a, a lack of, of belief or a lack of achievement see I flew jets for 20 years I flew jets on the front line for about four and then I went into flying training and I, I taught for about uh, about 10 years so and I, I teach now still in my school and one thing in my school I'm very interested in is uh, the individual so the individual how the individual sees themselves as a part of the unit in which they operate within this morning, we're doing air combat, which uh, takes three aircraft. Uh, the lead will take these aircraft up. They have a wingman and a, a hostile aircraft as well. And by listening to the students within my school, straight away I can tell where they are, where they are in their headspace primarily and how they feel they are doing. And I can address that with some sort of purposeful narrative. And the reason I can do that, because I was them for a very long time, not only through flying training, but obviously then through my professional flying career, which went on, as I said, for about 20 years in the Air Force and the, and the Navy. And one thing I think a lot about now, and someone sent me a video, which is why I'm doing this one, uh, by a couple of Green Berets, and one of the Green Berets was, was saying to the other one, it didn't ever feel good enough. It didn't feel good enough. And that resonated with me quite a lot. And he, one of the things he was talking about, there was another guy who also never felt good enough. And I've taken that rugby ball that's been thrown at me and I've run with it. And what I'm trying to say is as well is that I, I had that as well. I never felt good enough, no matter where I was. And in a way, that can be very draining. It means that you, you read a lot. You, you don't want to fail in your trip. So you do a lot of work outside of work. I spend a lot of time in work, to be fair. I was always in work for 12 hours plus every day. Uh, weekends are taken up with a lot of work. Even when you're on holiday, you go on holiday, it takes you three days to come down. And then by about Wednesday or Thursday, you've got to start spinning yourself back up again because you've got to be on the game when you go back to the squadrons. And I don't think I was the only person. Well, no, it wasn't because I used to have a lot of chats with, with my men that came to me with these issues themselves. But the competition is so high at that level. You don't want to be that person who doesn't know what they're doing. You have to be in the books. You have to be watching the flight tapes. You have to be talking with people about how we're going to do these things. And one thing people don't realize about flying jets is that it's a pretty uncomfortable career all the time, all of the time. I get emails written to me by guys in their 50s saying, Tim, uh, my life, I, I've, I've wasted my life. My life is, is hell, I hate it because I never flew fast jets or I never flew aviation. I never did aviation professionally and I really regret that and I hate it. And I, I say to them, look, you probably dodged a bullet there to be fair. And maybe there's some airline mates in the comments here or some, uh, some people that fly general aviation or people that are in the workspace that this kind of resonates with a little bit in high executive professional jobs or even jobs where you feel you should be that next rung on the ladder, whether it's your boss, you hate your boss or whatever. And if there are, then hit me in the comments, guys, because you know I'm a big fan. I react to those comments and that drives the content that we see when I do these videos, all right? But uh, for me, it, it ne I never felt good enough. It's not to say that my self-esteem was at rock bottom or that self-sabotage or imposter syndrome, which I've written about both of these things on my website, Fast Ship Performance, of course. It's not to say that I was wrapped up in, in self-sabotage. I believe I was to a certain extent. Um, but imposter syndrome, I didn't have that so much. I remember 
thinking, looking around the bar one night, we are lucky people to be here. You know what I mean? It's like, who are we? We're like no one, right? And we're flying fast jets. It's crazy. But everyone was in the same boat. We're all underconfident. Everyone's underconfident flying fast jets. And in a way, that's a good thing because the confident guys are the ones that got killed. Um, the ones that didn't come home sometimes. Those are the guys that were really confident. So it was healthy to be doubtful of your abilities, but also it was quite debilitating. And it was quite debilitating all the time. Um, I did read an essay once from an F3 navigator, a Tornado F3 navigator, who wrote a lovely essay, I can't remember the guy's name, about how whenever he flew, he was terrified, like this guy, whenever he flew. He never told anyone, he just flew. I wasn't like that. There were some sorties we did on the Tornado GR4, for example, at night on train following radar in awful weather around Scotland, where you think, I might not come back from this one. And my nav would say the same thing. But you do it anyway, because that's what you do, that's a job. But um, day to day, especially when you're instructing, uh, there is a, I've always felt there was a, a feeling of, I'm not good enough here, I need to do more work, I need to work harder. And when I went into more of a senior role with on that squadron, that didn't stop. What actually happened is you're, you're buried under a lot of paperwork and that paperwork takes priority because you're in that executive role. And then someone says, hey, Tim, you've got to come flying. All right, what are we doing? So I used to write crib sheets and stuff like this to spin myself up real quickly. But you're still underconfident. But in a way, you kind of accept that underconfidence. You're never going to be as good as the, the pilots you're flying with because your role now has changed, but you are supposed to be as good. So again, you, you, you live with this debilitating uh, lack of, um, or the, the sense of, uh, it's like a, an inability in, in effect. It's not an inability. It's more of a, you, you basically are living with self-doubt. A pretty deep self-doubt the whole time. But, and here's the thing that I took from uh, the video I saw that, well, I don't think the guy actually said this in full, but I'm saying it now. That, often that's important. That's what drives you. So again, in the comments, you tell me whether you've had this experience, right? So we need a little bit of underconfidence. We need a little bit of self-doubt. We need a little bit of um, imposter syndrome in the workplace. Because if we don't have that, we don't do the work that we need to do to keep us in that workplace and to keep us competitive. So we can all sit around going, oh, I hate my job, I feel really underconfident. But that actually is not a bad thing. And I, I'll take it from me, I flew jets like this. And I had lots and lots of people I flew with. I had some guys I flew with that hated it, just hated the flying, just hated the job, just felt really, uh, as if they shouldn't be there. And then, of course, at that point, you've got to have a conversation with them. You know, do you want to be a mate? Because we can put you somewhere else. But I never appreciated at the time that the insecurity that I was living with was actually a positive. I do now. I look back on it now. Uh, I still have this. I still have this feeling that I'm not good enough. So my school isn't good enough. I'm not earning enough money. Not enough money. I haven't got enough students. I'm only, I haven't got enough cars. I haven't got enough houses. I haven't got enough opportunities. I, I'm not building enough businesses. I have that. But I've learned to live with it. And I've learned to embrace it unlike when I was in the Air Force. Now I look at it and I think, good, good mate. It's good that you are underconfident and that you don't really think you know what you're doing because that's what drives you forward. That's what gets you to click on that business link and read the article about growth. Or that's what gets you to just decide to launch a new product in your school. Right, I'm gonna launch um, this. This is gonna help. I'm gonna launch video, a video now where I just do an eight minute brief and I move the little things around the whiteboard and I put it up in the cloud and I socialize that to my students and they react to it. They react to that product. Do they like that product? Does it help them learn or not? I don't sit there for days on end going, if I put this out, people might not like it. I just, I mean, I'm almost 50 now as well. It does help. I just throw it out. Let's see what happens. Let's throw it out. So what I'm trying to say to maybe younger people, let's say, that are in the workplace, is that it's all right to feel a bit insecure. It's all right to feel a bit anxious. Take this from an older dude, right? Look, I've got a grey beard and everything. It's never going to go dark again, is it? You know what I mean? I'm just aging. I'm aging out, which is lovely in a way. I like, I like transitioning into a, a different kind of role. But I've been uber competitive now into a role where maybe I'm trying to help younger people just, just you know, be better in, in the workplace, just have to be more confident and, and be less insecure, whatever it might be. I mean, that's running now, eight, uh, nine minutes. Jeez, guys, I'm too sorry. Let's stop it for 10 minutes. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys, really. I mean, the main thing I'm trying to tell you here is it's all right to not be all right sometimes, if that makes sense. That sounds one of those things, and it? It's okay to not be okay. Well, I'm not overly convinced that's the truth, to be fair. It's, it's all right to think that you're not too sure what you're doing. And also, everyone around you feels the same. And if you want more, go and read my essay on self-sabotage or imposter syndrome. I'll drop a link to it in the, uh, in the 
in the in the description of this video. I thought I'd get this out quickly, guys. Um, I'm in a rugby club, which is great, innit? I love rugby clubs. Uh, so I'm pulled over at a rugby club. But um, let me know what you think of the video, mate, and mates, mates. And uh, I feel like I'm talking to a buddy, of course, because I'm talking to, uh, to students of mine. I'm talking to people that support the channel. Uh, I love having this back and forth. I think it's brilliant. Let me know uh, what you think in the comments, guys. I really appreciate it. If there's something you want me to talk on, especially from coming from like a fast jet background or whatever, or transitioning into the business workspace, uh, or maybe even the mental health or anything like that, then let me know in the comments and I'll do a video like this for you. All right, I'll do a video like this for you. I do a lot of these for individuals. And so it's quite nice to put these on, on YouTube where I can speak to, to more people. Hey, I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much. All right, Tim Davies, Fast Jet performance.